Having an in-depth case study is one of the most important pieces, if not the most important piece, of getting a UX design position. Today I'm going to take you through how to begin your case study by going over the project overview and understanding the problem or opportunity. What's up guys, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Morgan. I am a UX designer who works in the financial services industry. I make videos talking about my career transition, UX design, and how you can become a UX designer as well. So I was going to wait until I moved to film this video because I was like, oh, I'd be in a more aesthetically pleasing space. The video would look nicer. I'd have more space to do things, but I decided every day that I wait to make this video is a day that someone could use it. So I just decided, forget it. I'm just going to put this video out there. So this is going to be part one of a series showing you how to create a UX design case study. This is for beginners who are trying to build their portfolio. So if you're an experienced designer, please don't come at me in the comments saying that I'm missing things or whatever, because this is really for beginners. It's supposed to be a digestible thing for them to use to make one of their first case studies or improve upon their case studies. This is really for conceptual or otherwise personal projects. So some things that you might do in a conceptual case study is not the same as how you would handle things in a business, but I will address that as it comes up. And of course there are nuances to every project, so it would be impossible for me to give an accurate tutorial that matches every single person's needs. Disclaimer, I will be using my UX design guided workbook throughout this series. You do not need to purchase it, you can just follow along and handwrite stuff or you can use Google Docs, whatever you want to do. However, if this workbook does interest you and or you want to support me, it is available on my Etsy shop in a printable PDF and Canva link form where you can edit it digitally. There's also a like digital journal note taking type of form where it's like a journal that you can put into GoodNotes or Notable or just some note taking app you can write on it on your iPad. I know some people prefer that. And you can use code YTCommunity to get 50% off of either of those journals. And if by chance you want to support me in other ways, you can always go to buymeacoffee.com slash morganux. With that said, let's get into it. So remember, I am presenting this information in the form of a case study. And the first part of a case study that people generally see other than like your header that has the shots and title and everything of your project will be the project overview. The project overview is exactly what it sounds like. It's usually just the who, what, when, where, how, why of your project. In my workbook, I have it represented as the title, tagline, summary, stakeholders, roles and responsibilities, and the timeline. You don't really complete the project overview until the project is already done, but it is the first thing that readers of your case study will see. It's really important to not try and think of a title or anything before you start doing your project because otherwise you're going to be like trying to match your project to your title even if it's subconscious. It's why authors will often write a book and then come up with the title afterwards rather than the other way around because then you're trying to find a story that matches the title rather than a title that matches the story and the story is the important part. Of course if you're doing a redesign or something that's different because then your title would probably just be like website or app redesign or whatever it is. Next we're going to talk about understanding the problem or opportunity. So the actual first part of the design process is understanding the problem or opportunity. And this can be one of the hardest parts of the design process because a lot of people, especially new designers, will go into things with a lot of bias. You'll go in expecting to make an app or a website or whatever. You're thinking solution first. The key is not to look around and think how can an app solve this problem that I see? Because then you're already thinking that you want to make an app. Again, it's another case of you coming up with a problem for a solution that you've already decided on rather than coming up with a solution for a problem that you've identified. A great way to get started is to go on sites like uxchallenge.co where they literally just give you a problem to solve. At the very least, I think that it could give you inspiration for a problem that you see in everyday life and that website might help you identify it a little easier. Or if you have a specific industry that you want to work in, 
look around in that industry, look at reviews of products that you like. If you're in that industry already and you're just in a different role, like what problems do you see that you can solve for? What opportunities do you see to improve things? So in my case, I was interested in the financial services industry. So I was looking around and a lot of my friends are independent contractors or gig workers and it was tax season and everybody was complaining about their taxes, they were complaining about getting all of their documents together, all of the stuff that they had to track, they were like wary of their accountants thinking that they weren't doing their jobs correctly or whatever. Uh, and then they were obviously complaining about having to pay taxes. So all around tax season is not fun for them. And I was like, okay, you guys are garbage at organization. So if you're wary of your accountant, it's because you didn't give them the proper information. And that really got me thinking that there wasn't just a problem to be solved here, but there was an opportunity to do things better. Again, do not go into this thinking that you're going to create an app or website. You might not even be creating something new. You might just be improving something that already exists. Just go into this trying to understand the current experience. Understand the problem or opportunity, how it affects people, and how people are currently trying to solve that problem or what the current process is. Now that you've defined your problem, you can write your problem statement. Describe the problem that needs to be solved. What is the gap between the current state of the problem and the desired state of the problem? So my problem statement for this problem was non-traditional income sources complicate taxes, as it is no longer as simple as handing in a W-2 and receiving money from the government. People with taxable income outside or instead of a traditional full-time or part-time position want to understand their taxes as well as stay organized throughout the year to avoid last-minute scrambling and missing out on benefits. For this specific project, I also had a target market in mind because the people who brought the problem to my attention were all independent contractors or were people who had a full-time income but then had independent contractor gig work on the side. This is not a requirement for every project when it comes to conceptual or solo projects. Sometimes that will come after you've conducted the research. For example, I, during my uh, Career Foundry boot camp, when I was doing my immersion project, I was given a solution first, which of course you're not supposed to do, um, but if that's the situation that you're in, you may discover your target market after the research, so I did competitive research and I found that the young adult market was underserved when it came to uh, expert question and answer apps, and that's how I determined my target market. A target market is important to identify at some point because you can't really just make a general app. Did you guys catch that? I said app. Bias doesn't stop after you get a job, just so you know. Always check it. You can't really just make a general app because eventually you're going to get into your user personas and everything and there needs to be some sort of scope of who you're designing for because if you design for everyone then you're really designing for no one. Next you can actually start exploring solutions. Hear me out. I'm speaking generally. Obviously don't go into this being like an app with these features or anything like that. Don't start thinking about features. Don't start thinking about if you're going to make an app or a website or whatever. So you want to be really general with your potential solutions. In my case, what could solve the problem is a way to organize their documents throughout the year so it's not one big overwhelming task or finding a way to easily track their write-offs and benefits throughout the year. So this part is also not required, but looking for business opportunities. I think that this is always a good idea because ultimately as a UX designer, you're going to be working for a business for the most part, and their goal is usually to make money. So showing that you're taking the business into consideration, I think can really only add value to your project. But again, it's not required if it doesn't come naturally, don't do it, don't do anything just to go through the motions, otherwise it'll just seem forced. And if someone asks you a question about it, you're going to stumble. So the business opportunities that I included in my case study are accountants using this in order to better organize their clients and then get rid of that whole idea of accountants not doing their jobs, which is ridiculous when you're not organizing your own documents. 
Uh, Cross-selling, what came to my mind immediately was that a lot of people use TurboTax and I felt like there was a gap between QuickBooks and TurboTax so I thought that this would sort of be like a bridge. Uh, and then employee management, so people who own businesses that have independent contractors, their taxes can get complicated, so I thought that maybe something like this, like having their independent contractors' taxes uh, and expenses and everything tracked more easily, would be easier for uh, the people who are actually managing those independent contractors. And there you go guys, you have officially started your case study. As a new designer, I would really advise you not to skip steps. I know that it's really tempting to go ahead and start picking out colors and finding images and you know looking at UI designs that inspire you and everything like that. Like you might be trying to think, oh this feature would be cool, oh I want to add AR into this. We've all been there. But try not to do that because you're really just going to waste a lot of time and your project will suffer for it. Everything that you do should be aesthetic and feature free for right now. If you get past the understanding stage and you want to move forward into research and so on, and I don't have my next video out yet, I recommend that you make a copy of whatever you're using to create this case study, so whether that's a Google Doc um, or my workbook. I suggest that you make a copy of whatever it is that you're doing and then you can like when I eventually do come out with the next video if you want to move forward you have that in one doc and then maybe you watch my video and you decide you want to go a different route it's just good to have copies uh, so that way you don't have to like undo things of course my workbook does have a guide for each section uh, if you want to continue with that so you should be fine if you use that should you choose to move forward without me. I also want to recommend that you guys go watch VA Experience. I think that's how you say his name. I watched him when I was getting towards the end of my job hunting journey and it helped me out a lot. He does videos critiquing and reviewing and offering advice on usually junior UX designer portfolios. Really, really helpful. He goes into case studies. Of course, he is just one person. It's not gospel, but he's very helpful because he is a UX hiring manager. And he literally just put up a video about creating case studies. The day that I'm filming, he put up a video. And I was like, son of a I feel like every time I script a video and I get ready to record, someone puts up, like someone bigger, puts up a video that's either the same or extremely similar to what I was planning on. And I'll just get really demotivated and I'm like, ugh, I, like, no one wants to hear from Will, me, they'd rather hear from this bigger creator or this more experienced designer or whatever. But I just decided, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to put this out there and see what happens. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today. If you found this video to be helpful or valuable in any way, please make sure to like this video leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to purchase your UX design guided workbook on my Etsy shop and use code YTCommunity to get it for half off. If you want to enable my caffeine addiction, you can always buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash morganux. Follow me on Instagram where I never post any content ever at morgan underscore UX. That's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.